try this again. Take three. If anybody's watching, please let me know. Fingers crossed that we managed to do it this time. This is hopefully the third and successful take of episode 135 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilace, coming to you live today from YouTube. And I'm sounding a little bit hesitant because this is the third time I've tried to do this, but it looks as though I had two error messages pop up from YouTube saying that I couldn't connect, but hopefully it's going to work this time. If you're watching the recording, then you will have no clue what I'm talking about. But if you're watching live, you might have. Right, a few people are commenting, so I guess I guess we're good to go. Send me good thoughts here, people, okay? Right, um, I th this wasn't planned, but at the t today's... Uh, well, start again. Today's episode, this episode 135, which will be followed by another one soon after, uh, is dedicated to Chanel number no. 5. The one that I'm going to do straight after this one is going to be dedicated to a few of the Chanel extras. But the bit that I hadn't planned was that literally a few hours ago I went over the 5,000 subscriber mark and I thought, gosh, how, how fitting that having gone over the 5,000 subscriber mark I'm now going to be doing a video on Chanel number no. 5. But I can't um, let this milestone pass without thanking all of you because there's absolutely no way that I would have made it to the 5,000 subscriber mark were it not for your support and your encouragement and your knowledge and wit and kindness and generosity. So thank you very much indeed. Give yourselves a round of applause as well for being so supportive of this channel. Um, and let's have some fun with Chanel number no. 5. So I want to hear about all of your Chanel number no. 5 thoughts, which version of number no. 5 is your favourite. Um, hopefully over the next 20, 25 minutes or so, we're, we're, we will saturate ourselves completely in the world of number no. 5. I've seen that there are lots and lots of comments um, coming through, and I don't want to be rude and ignore them, but uh, I probably will not be able to read every single one. Lots and lots of hellos from Eric and Ilias and Angeline and 87 Linseed and Path, uh, Joanna, lots and lots of people tuning in here. Angela's here. Uh, Eric says it's looking good. Yeah, just, just keep those fingers crossed. Um, A2ZIN1 says, hallelujah, I can finally tune into one of your live streams and it's a Chanel one. Hello from San Francisco. Gosh, thank you very much for tuning in. Lala was saying, oh my goodness, the excitement. Florida Sam is in Florida and so on. The Chanel snowball is back. Well, I thought, you know, it's a celebration and we need to do this, don't we? Right. Let's let's start properly. Here we go. I love how this works. I can't remember how long I've had it now. I think it must be a couple of years. Here we go. Here we go. And I should say that the reason why I'm doing a video on Chanel number no. 5 is because it is on the verge of celebrating a very, very big anniversary indeed. It's pretty cool this still, isn't it? None other than its 100th anniversary because Chanel number no. 5 was first launched, of course, in 1921, which means this is the sort of Christmas, if you like, coming up the holiday season where it's going to turn 100 years old. And I thought, right, perfect opportunity to do a special video on number no. 5. Uh, Frank Chaitown says hello from Chicago. Letty says congratulations. Congrats, you deserve all the love, says Elias. Thank you very much. Seriously, thank you very much, everybody. And then, then, then not just empty words. I mean them sincerely. Sincerely, There is no way I would have got to 5,000 or, you know, there's no way I would have got to 1,000 without you. Uh, a to Z in one says you're on your way to 100k viewers. Yeah, <laughs> possibly. Um, Flacaness says, how great. I love number five, especially the Parfum version, and congratulations for the 5,000. You deserve it so much. Very kind. Thank you. Uh, we've got Maryam, who's watching from Canada. Ashfaq says, congrats. So many of you tuning in today. This is fantastic. Uh, FW says, hi from Germany. Great to catch you live. Uh, Joseph says, long time watcher, first time live. Greetings from LA. Thank you very much for tuning in. And Floating Man says, oh, is this just on number five? This video is just on number five, but then we'll move on to the extras. Okay, Angeline says, I miss the Facebook lives when we could send the floating hearts. Well, but I, I feel the floating hearts, Angeline. It just works a lot. Well, I said, I, I would have said prior to today that it works a lot better on YouTube. Okay, so let's do some smelling. Um, number five is great. I like her sister, number 22, even more, though, says, says Brady. Well, you may want to stay tuned for the other episode then if you prefer number 22. You deserve one million subscribers, says Florida. The next Jeremy. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm not sure what to make of that, but I'll take the first part of your comment. Thank you very much. Hello from Athens, says Effie. Love the body products. Number five, EDP is the best for me. Okay, let's talk number five. And while we do so, let me prepare, let me prepare this bottle of the extra. So of course, um, I'm sure all of you out there will know that uh, number five was um, uh, composed by Ernest Beau. Um, I won't go into the, the history uh, or, or the, the fiction around uh, how it was composed. Some of you will know that there's a whole book written about number five. I believe number five is still the only perfume that has actually had an entire book written about it. Worth checking out. Um, you know, all of those stories about whether the, the dosage of the um, aldehydes was an accident or not, or the, the thing about, you know, is it called number five because because it was the fifth sample that um, that Chanel herself tried, etc., etc., etc. I think we'll sort of put that to one side. But in 1921, we did get this extraordinary um, composition, which was really, really ahead of its time, uh, still comes across as quite, uh, quite abstract, quite modernist. Um, then things start getting a little bit blurry because, of course, we now have an EDT as well. The Chanel website reckons that the EDT uh, emerged in 1924, but I think a few people might dispute that. And then that's all we had for the longest time. And then let me look at my notes here. In the 80s, that's right, in 1986, Jacques Polge composed the Eau de Parfum. And Eau de Parfum, as a, as, as a categorization, was a relatively new thing then. And then fast forward to 2007, and we had the Eau Première, uh, also composed by Jacques Polge. And then finally, just a few years ago, in 2016, Olivier Polge, current in-house perfumer at Chanel, released the Lo. There was a Cologne, number five Cologne, uh, or Eau de Cologne at some point as well, but that's not part of the Chanel family. Um, we probably won't have time to smell all of them. And I should also at this point say that a while ago, I did do an entire video just on Au Premier. So what I will try to do is link to it either there or in the video description below so you can watch that too. I, I rate the Au Premier very, very, very highly. So the reason why I'm not going to be talking about it specifically here isn't meant to be a reflection on whether I, um, you know, like it or not. I absolutely love the um, Au Premier. Now, this is rather special as well because this is a very, very fresh batch. So it's the current formulation of the extrait. A lot of people quite disdainfully now say that the only version of Chanel number no. 5... Actually, let me retract that. Not a lot of people. Some people now disdainfully say that the only version of number no. 5 worth bothering with is the extrait, but I couldn't disagree more. Um, I, th I think there's definitely more than just the extra that's worth bothering with. This is always so, so scary when you're dealing with these extra bottles. Um, I'm looking at comments. Druba says, I don't know if I'd ever put Persilase and Jeremy in the same vicinity. <laughs> let's, let's move away from that one. That's the first comment I've seen here. Um, do you want to see Persilase doing this, the one million dance? Never mind. <laughs> Um, Florida Sam says just think he deserves to be more popular I know that's how I took it it's fine and it's made me laugh Angeline says I love the low version of number 5 but otherwise prefer number 22 overall uh, do they still make the number 5 extra in the 30 mil bottle I don't know have a look on the website I don't know I love most number 5 formulations on other people but only where Au Premier says Eric and Aperol Spritz says low is fantastic See, I'm not sure I do. That's definitely my least favourite. That's definitely my least favourite. But, you know, it's it's still a version of number five. So let's get this game started. Start as you mean go on to go on, right? It's going to be all downhill after number five. But... I, have, I have smelt and talked about number five before in these videos on several occasions. And that's also another reason for doing a video dedicated entirely to number five, same as I did with Frederick Mal's Portrait of a Lady, so that in future, if ever I need to include number five in a, some sort of a best of list or something, I can just say, go and watch my video on number five. But... It is getting harder and harder to say new things about number five, and yet, it's just so beautiful, and yet, 
every single time I smell it, it does feel like smelling it for the first time. And it is absolutely true that each of the versions presents something different, offers something different. Obviously, in, in the case of Lowe and Aubremier, the differences are more marked. Um, but Chanel themselves will, will tell you, and I think even their website says now, that the x is slightly different from the EDP, which is slightly different from the EDT. Um, Kimberly says the Pure Parfum is the most elegant version to me. Now, do I agree that I think it's the most elegant? I somehow, I somehow think it, I would definitely say that it's the most abstract. And that it's the purest. It, it seems to be the purest distillation of the idea that Ernest Beau had, which I guess was to take some fairly familiar, um, well-used perfumery florals, but somehow present them as though they were being transmitted through the coldness of the northern lights and as though they were being, you know, sort of brought down from the heavens to earth by angels wielding trays made of silvery clouds. It, it, it does have an unearthly quality to it. And I think the Parfum is probably the one that most strongly has that unearthly quality to it. For, you know, for the literally the one person who may be watching this video who has never, ever smelt Chanel Number no. 5 before, I should give a very, very rough description of its makeup and its composition and its structure. It is, it, it is what is what is classified as an aldehydic floral. So what that means is that it opens with a very, very, very strong burst of um, champagne bubble-like, candle wax-like, sparkling, sparkling aldehydes. The aldehydes used here really feel as though they're flash bulbs constantly going off. It really catches the light, this scent. Then the heart is, as I say, a fairly familiar accord of um, rose jasmine ylang ylang, but made so much more interesting and so unique and so distinctive through the use of those aldehydes. And then the base is supposed to be a sandalwoody base, which I would say in the parfum is, is the smoothest, the creamiest. I would imagine that the parfum probably uses a higher proportion of sandalwood, maybe a better quality of sandalwood. That that would be my guess, because that's usually how these things go when you make an extra compared to a, you know, EDP at EDT. And it, powdery obviously is a word that we need to use as well in relation to um, the aldehydes. And it just feels as though the, the rose and the jasmine are made of powder or it you know, or it feels as though the powdery clouds have a rosy tint to them. But whichever way round you look at it, whether you kind of go into the scent from the aldehydes first or from the florals first, it does have this angelic, transcendent, translucent quality to it, celestial quality to it, full of light, um and also full of lightness. It's a very weightless feeling sort of scent that somehow has managed to stand the test of time and also be the quintessence of a very sort of Western European sophistication, even though it is otherworldly and unearthly and, you know, it feels as though it could be the scent of, you know, Galadriel from Lord of the Rings. There's also something very, very French about it. Um, And, and 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 I could sit here all day long smelling it on this blotter, seriously. Um, and it's fascinating in my head comparing it to Estee Lauder's White Linen. I, I may go and compare the two after this broadcast because White Linen is very similar in structure. And yet that has a very North American sensibility to it because some of the funkiness of those florals has been taken away in white linen, whereas they're very much present um, in number five to give it body. Not that I, I, I adore white linen as well. So that's the x -ray. And I had another thought as well about number five in preparation for this video, but I want to get to some comments because you're commenting so much that I would hate to not um, 
have a discussion with all of you. Uh, so Tushara says, my favorite version of number five is the number five eau de cologne. 80s for Grant says, I'm thinking about buying number five and Coco EDP. So far, I love all the Coco Mademoiselle range. Lalwa says, Pure Parfum is the closest to the skin, I think. Yes, and so it, it, it should be because that's how you would, because you don't expect the extra to have as much diffusiveness and throw as you would expect the EDT, for instance, to have. 87 Linseed says, I would like to wear something like this and buy Chanel if possible, but something more masculine. Any recommendations? Wear Eau Premier. Absolutely. Uh, Eric says, it smells like one of those radiant gold halos from classical paintings. Yes, you know, like a Botticelli halo, some, something like that. Absolutely. Um, Von Pimpsor says, I have about 200 bottles in my collection and never smelled number five. So there you go. You are that one person. <laughs> um, Rich says, smelling the perfume brings me right back to the 50s when my mother would dress up to go shopping in downtown Omaha. And I think that's another thing that, that, that thanks very much for that comment that you've made me realize as well or remember. Um, a lot of people care least for the EDP, which I've got here, uh, whereas actually the EDP is one of my favourite versions. I think I'd probably go extra EDP and then the rest. But I think that also shows a little bit like, you know, if you're a Doctor Who fan, your favourite Doctor tends to be the one that you grew up with. I think with Chanel Number no. 5, your favourite version also tends to be the one that you first became aware of. And because I'm a kid of the 70s and the 80s, I suppose the EDP is probably the one that somewhere in the back of my mind is the is the one that is Chanel number five for me. Whereas the X-ray is something that I came to um, a bit more objectively, a bit more studiedly. I, I, I don't know if you'd agree with that. Um, uh, Von Pimsor says, I was always under the probably ignorant impression that most of Chanel's offerings is for older women. Um, well, no, therefore, whoever wants to wear them. Ilya says, I love number five, but Bois d'Azile stole my heart for its use of aldehydes. Ah, and Eric has just put on a dab of vintage cologne to join us. Thank you very much. Flaconess says, I always have in mind what was written in the book by Tilar J. Matseo, warm bodies in fresh washed linen, but every time you smell it, you discover a different aspect. Yeah, absolutely true. Angela says, loved white linen, and it was my first holiday abroad scent. That's a good one. Um, Aperol Spritz says, I believe the current number five extra comes in seven and a half mil, 15 mil and 30 mil damper bottle. There is also a 900 mil size of number five extra. <gasps> Almost a litre of number five extra. How much is that? Angeline says, I think low is the perfect name because it has a watery quality that I love, is looser in structure, which makes it more modern. The EDP and EDT versions are way tighter, which makes it heavier. Yeah, I, I would go along with that. Um, Anna says, caught alive on my birthday. Everybody send birthday wishes to Anna. Happy birthday. And one of my all-time favourite perfume houses. Um, Von Pimsor says, of the 70s, stop it. You're not older than 30. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> you just keep going like that. Effie says, any information for a new formulation for the 100 years? No, sorry, I haven't. I, no, I, I couldn't tell you anything about that. Eric says, the EDP is too heavy on the samsara sandalwood. Yeah, some people think that. Angeline says, I used to wear the EDT when I was 18. Definitely not an old lady fragrance. No, absolutely not. Olfa Olfacto Files, I like that name. I'm also most familiar with the EDP. It was incredibly popular in the 80s and 90s when I was young. Uh, Raf says, do you like Eau Premium? I suppose you mean the Eau Premier. Maybe Chanel should do a one called Eau Premium. I love Eau Premier. Absolutely love Eau Premier. Druba wishing Anna happy birthday. And Brady says, I recommend Vega by Garlin if you like number 22. I, I've been a long time since my smelt Vega and that was at the Champs-Élysées boutique. But we need to move on. So let me just label this. Do, would you like me to do a blotter update at the end of today's video. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, when I'm smelling a new release, so not a perfume that I've smelled like a gazillion times before, a few hours after the broadcast, I do a little um, update in the video description below about how the scent has developed, because obviously we can't judge perfumes on first impressions. But I'm kind of thinking you all know how number five goes. Do you really want a blotter? I've got two yeses already. I'll see what I can do. Who's wearing Mitsuko but a door number 19, Anna? Well, you wear what you like. It's your birthday. So I'm just going to label this because it might be interesting to do a kind of version by version comparison. Um, let me move on to the... Let's do it chronological if we're going to smell all of them. We may not have a chance to. Here's my bottle of the EDT, which I really, really like as well. You know, I'm, 
I love them all. I mean, Chanel number no. five is absolutely one of my all time favorites. It's a terrible cliche, I think, to say that, but it, it, it is totally true. And as I'm smelling the EDT, I'll just share with you another thought that I had about possibly why um, number no. five has been so successful. See, interestingly, a lot of people call this the woody one. In fact, I think that is how it's labelled now on the Chanel website. Um, I mean, I suppose, OK, in comparison, maybe it feels as though it's more citrus woody, but, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't... There you go, somebody, who's that saying? Lalawa saying the Chanel website calls the EDT the woody one. Yeah, it's... But, you know, you wouldn't call it a woody scent. It, it is still an aldehyde, aldehydic floral with, with, with that sandalwood base. But t to me, there's a kind of orangey, citrusy, woody quality to it. You know, maybe sort of shades of petit gras. And I need to be conscious of the fact that I've smelled the X-ray and so my nose will now be picking out in the EDT the things that maybe aren't in the X-ray. Um, Angeline says, can you compare number five, number 22 and Kalesh at some point? Oh, that's an interesting one. Maybe, yeah, at some point, maybe, but not today, I don't think. So the EDT is obviously by definition lighter, more diffusive, more open. Um, just let that develop for a bit. But one thing that I was thinking as well, you know, is in her, in her really, really superb book called um, Perfume, a Century of Scents, which I think you can only just about see here, this sort of bright red cover, uh, Lizzie Ostrom has a really great chapter on a number five, which I think I've mentioned before, where she she reckons that one of the reasons why it has stayed with us for as long as it has is because Chanel have ensured that it has kept up with the times and they have actually made judicious and clever tweaks to it as they've gone along to ensure that, that it remains relevant. Um, I suspect she may well be right, but one thought that I had just the other day was that there is something, there is something just the right level of abstract um, in in the structure of number five and the idea of number five. So it's not, it's not so completely abstract as to be unrecognizable and shapeless and formless so that you, so that you don't have a way into it. But it's also not so completely concrete that you just pin it down. So I suppose in that sense, maybe it's a kind of impressionistic abstract. And I think some scents like that almost become v open vessels into which we can pour whatever our concerns and worries and preferences happen to be at any given moment in history. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know how some people become very, very successful models. Um, when you sort of see them when they're not in model mode, they don't actually particularly appear to be especially strikingly beautiful or attractive people, but they have the kind of face that can be moulded. They have the kind of face that a photographer can work with, you know, that a makeup um, artist can work with and can make what they want of it. And, and a face that we can then project a lot onto. Uh, to, to me, the best example of this has always been Kate Moss. I've never considered Kate Moss to be especially beautiful, and yet she's undeniably a fantastic model because she seems to just sort of take on whatever it is that the viewer wants to wants to put onto her, wants to wants to impose on her. And th there you go. Thank you very much. Eric says Kate Moss is the pinnacle of this phenomenon. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Von Pimsor says, as an international supermodel, I'm very offended, but I'm I'm sure you are the exception, and you are just strikingly gorgeous, Von Pimsor. Um, and I think number five has that quality. And perhaps because of what's going on in the world at the moment, and please let us hope it doesn't last much longer, now when I smell number five, I'm struck by the cleanliness. I'm struck by the, um, the, the, the purity. Um, it's always had that there, of course, anyway, because the aldehydes, the way they're handled, have always conveyed that sense of being out in the sun, somehow being cleansed by the sun, the outdoorsiness, the, the chilliness. But I think in the past, I homed in more on the sensuality of, of, of number five, the florals. Whereas now, especially in the extra, I just thought, gosh, this is, 
This is this is so beautifully clean. This is like a sort of steam shower of number five that cleanses you and purifies you. Um, I don't know. Does that does that make any sense to you? Does that sort of echo with anything um, you may be thinking of? More comments. Florida Sam says, wearing Coromandel as I don't have number five yet. My mother had a bottle from the 50s, but it's long gone. Never mind. Uh, uh, Rich Mitch says, got Coromandel for my birthday. That's a good present. EDT is the dry one in the collection, says Kimberly. Yeah, I'd go along with that. It probably is the driest one, although I, I quite like the dryness of, of the Eau Premier as well. Um, Florida Sam says, as long as we get don't get number five blue with Ambroxan, I'm all for keeping up with the times. Um... And Ilya says, amen to that, Florida Sam, absolutely. Joanna says, I am the second person who doesn't know number five. <gasps> There's two of you. <laughs> Despite wearing other Chanel creations in the past, you made me want to try it today until Kate Moss now, and I'm off the idea of trying it. <laughs> no, try it anyway. Jess says, did you ever smell a vintage number five from the 50s? I don't know when it's from, but I did manage to find a vintage extra uh, when I visited Japan a few years ago and it, it it is beautiful and it's probably richer in the sandalwood um but but that also could be just because it's a little bit older um so yeah and and the edt the edt um the edt is is starting to feel a little bit peachier we've got a question here from 87 linseed why does chanel get a pass with reformulations but garlan doesn't honest question well number one garlan get to get get a pass from me because i think with a lot of their reformulations they're actually doing a, a very good job um chanel have done a very good job with all of their reformulations and I think the love that people have for Garlin is kind of different from, from the love that people have for Chanel. Chanel is a much more austere brand. It's a much more aloof brand. You know, you, you for example, can't get to uh, the Chanel perfumers to get statements from them, to get comments from them. Whereas you can somehow, you know, for example, get in touch with the, the, the folks at Garlin much more easily. So maybe it's that. Maybe, maybe we feel maybe we feel a more sort of family-like affection for Garlin. So then we feel that we have the right to to pass judgment on them because they're just like an extended member of our family. Um, what do what do other people think? Angeline says, I think Chanel has always had only one perfumer at a time. That's a good point. And have never really been bogged by trends. They're also, they also rarely discontinue scents. Garla is completely different. Yeah, the, absolutely very, very valid points. Um, and so let's do the, let's do the EDP as well. And then I promise we will stop this and move on to another episode with the x -rays. Who knew you could do a whole thing like this just on one perfume? This is the um, EDP, stolen from Madame Persilaise's collection. Her favourite Chanel is uh, Coco. Um, she She's very, very kind. And when she wears number five, she wears it for me. She likes it, but she doesn't like it as much as Coco. And um, when, when she does wear it, though, she wears the ED, EDP. So she is she is an EDP girl, which we will pop onto here, and and I confess I I love I love the EDP on her, probably most I think I sort of like smelling the 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 extra as an abstract construct, but I love smelling the EDP on her. Ah, see now. I do like that. I do love the EDP. I don't understand why some people. Are, Funnily enough, but this this could be because I've just smelt those two other versions. It's the one that feels as though it's got the lowest proportion of the of the aldehydes. Um, Florida Sam's just made a, a very valid point here in relation to the question we were talking about. We look forward with Chanel. We tend to look into the past with Garlin. That that is a very 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 astute point actually. And and because with Garlin we expect them to be able to keep in good shape creations that in some cases are well over 100 years old, um, they are bound to, in the eyes of some people, fail. Not in the eyes of all people. I think in many cases they are doing a superb job. Watch my recent video on Garland's Jiki. The current uh, extrait of Jiki is just superb. But back to Chanel Number no. 5 EDP. This is the one that actually is now coming across as the least aldehydic and the most concerned with you know resins and balsams in in the base and 
it's the one that actually is coming across as the, as the least floral. And maybe maybe that's why I, I, I tend to like it most on, on Madame Persolet's because obviously the aldehydes are there. And yet this seems to be more a kind of sandalwood aldehyde. Um, somebody mentioned Samsara already, you know, almost like a kind of Chanel version, precursor of Samsara. Um, I, yeah, it would be a precursor because this was 1986, whereas I think Samsara was 1989. And and smelling it now, I'm getting shades of the of the um, orange blossom from from Coco. Um, Eric says the most human. Now, yeah, yes, maybe the the least unearthly, the least. Uh, celestial in a way, the, the the most the most earthbound. No, I like that. I like that. Um, Angela says EDP is my next favorite after the parfum. Rich Mitch, back to the Garlin Chanel debate. Garlin have suffered from product inflation. Too many new releases. Not enough time invested in them. Garlin are owned by a larger company. Chanel are standalone. All, all, all valid points. Which is why. I love reading your comments because I learned so much from you. Flacaness says to me the EDP is much stronger on the citrus notes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You may you may well be right. Um, uh, Ellie Tsai says hello, Mister Five K. <laughs> Ellie from Virginia. Hi. I wear Chanel whenever I need a confidence boost. Works every time. And Tomasz says hello from the south of Poland. Tresh, I can't speak about Chanel Number no. Five with admiration. I don't get the hype surrounding it since I started to be interested in perfume. It's simply not my cup of tea. That's absolutely fine. Nieszkodzi, you can like what you what you like. Ashfark says, extra is always. Um, and because of time, I'm going to rush. So like I said before, there is a whole video on Eau Première, to which you will find a link. But let's, well, let's end with the most recent version of number five, which is, of course, the low composed by Olivier Polge. And I haven't smelt it for a while. I deliberately didn't smell it in the prep for this video because I thought, OK, well, let's try to come to it fresh. I've thought of it, long thought of it, as my least favourite uh, of the of the number fives. But that you know, it, it's still it's still in a, in a high league. But um, let's see what I think of it now, having not smelt it for a good long while. Although it, it's you know those three that I've just put onto those blotters are a tough act to follow. Um, whoops, and I've dropped it. Let's see. Okay. It, it's do we need a do we need a night edition mr p what a uh, chanel number no. five pour la nuit um no no i i hope they don't do something like that would they would they call it a chanel number no. five or privé who knows they're bound to be planning something for the hundred year anniversary so who knows Angela says, don't like Samsara at all, and luckily don't get any vibes of it in any of the number fives. No, I mean, the, the, the comparison is just with, with the sort of sandal woody base, that's all. Now, number five low. To me, this is all, yeah, see, the, the, it, it's, it's, it's the version that to me has always tried the hardest. Um, and is the least faithful to the spirit of number five. Au Premier, I thought, was just an absolutely superb... Um, essay on really updating number five and bringing it to the 21st century and doing a kind of number five according to first principles um but but law just feels to me like it's a bit bloodless and it's trying a little bit too hard to appeal to a younger generation um you know appealing to a younger generation is no problem and i'm sure that that's what chanel were doing with this one but it it just doesn't feel it's never felt quite right. It it just doesn't feel as though it it has got the soul of of number five. It feels like it's being pulled in another direction, and so it kind of falls in the middle and doesn't know quite what it wants to be, which feels like a shame ending on a bit of a downer because you know I do have to say that overall I do I do love them, but number five is always the iffiest one. Somebody's just said Flacaness number five low could also be called number five sport. Yes, and the fact that you're right indicates that there's something not quite right there because I don't think you should ever have a number five sport. Uh, Kimberly says, Lo is like Chalimar, Parfait Initial. Oh, I was a little bit more fond of Parfait Initial. But I think the problem with that is that they... Well, I suppose in a way that's the problem with this. 
Shalimar Parfait Initial shouldn't have been sold as a Shalimar, and maybe number five low shouldn't be sold as a number five. Maybe they should have called it number five plus or something like that. Richmond says Chanel attracting the viewers today at 100. Absolutely. Uh, John MZ says if Lowe didn't have the number five name attached, I'd like it more. Yeah, and I and and I probably would as well. Um, and Jess says extraits are my favourites as well, but I like to layer extrait number five of the extra of five with au premier. <gasps> I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that maybe next time I go into work. Aperol Sprit says, a friend of mine told me that number five was his dad's signature scent. Ooh, I like the sound of this dad. Without knowing what scent it was, he used to smell number five on his dad when he was a child. So now he so he used to, so he used to associate number five on his dad when he was a child. So now he associates number five with a man's fragrance. And if you can dig this out from Piver, from the brand Piver, I've um, reviewed this on Perslaze.com. See if you can find a perfume called Rêve d'Or, Dream of Gold, Golden Dream, because that also feels very much like a precursor to number five. And that seems to have become, over the years, a real cult favourite amongst North African men. Go figure. Superb scent. And you can sometimes find it very, very cheap. Um, last time I found it was in Brixton Market in London, back in the days when, you know, you could do things like go around markets. Um, how about... Um, cacao Chanel number five to appeal to the younger generations. <laughs> okay, right. So, um, I think we should give Chanel a kind of virtual round of applause for keeping number five with us for as long as they have. Absolutely one of the greatest uh, scents ever composed. Will will forever be in my top ten. Um, amazing that it has reached this milestone. I think I think when twenty twenty one actually comes round and the and the anniversary comes around properly, we should all celebrate by having a number five day and wearing our favorite version of number five. If Ernest Beau is looking down on us from somewhere from his aldehydic northern lights fueled heaven, we need to send him a great big thank you for giving us this beautiful, beautiful abstract gorgeousness and the other. Uh, Chanel perfumers, uh, Jacques Paul, Olivier Paul, I suppose Henri Robert would have had something to do with it as well over the years, for giving us really this um, this true phenomenon in perfumery. So happy birthday, happy hundredth birthday, Chanel number no. five. For those of you watching live, don't go away because in a few minutes we will be back with another episode focusing on a sp few special extraits from Chanel. Take care. Bye. <laughs>